We're setting new records in the gold sector. Silver won't be far behind. You'll be shocked at what you learned today, what's going on in the world, because a lot is changing that silver and gold investors need to be on top of. Today, we're joined by our special guest, a fan favorite, Mr. Pat Holland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative. We're going to talk about gold. We're going to talk about silver. We're going to talk about fascinating things going on in that area, especially in China, but then we're going to bring it all back home and talk about what's going on for you in the United States. Legal tender legislation and a call to action. Pat Holland, welcome back to Ron's Basement. Hey, thank you, Ron. It's great to be here. Hey, we're live for the first time. This is awesome. Yeah, we're and, on a live and, stream. Go ahead. Uh, we're on a live stream and we're uh, we're working our way through this together. So thank you to you to, for being here and our viewers. Yeah, and, and this is a perfect opportunity for them to ask questions in real time and all that fun stuff. But I noticed you got Smitty front and center there. You know, if Smitty had a uh, Chinese name, it would be I Bring Dough. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to talk about what's going on in China because uh, it's fascinating. And, and like I said, then we're going we're gonna to hone in on what our viewers are really concerned about, and that is the United States gold and silver uh, legal tender legislation, but gold is bumping up against all-time highs. It's really crazy what's going on out there. Do you do you feel like we've turned the corner with gold, and any thoughts on what that might mean for silver? I don't know yet. Um, I, you know, there's a cup and handle for silver. You've talked about it before, and this has been well-known for quite some time. And silver is kind of, there's a, a cup and handle, I think, for gold as well. Yep. But at the same time, uh, I have not kept uh, track of those charts recently. As you know, my interest in gold and silver is on the on the legal tender side. Of course, if it goes up in value, I wouldn't mind. But th that's not the thrust of what we do uh, with the silver and gold legislation, for instance, in Missouri. But I want to remind you of something before we start talking about China. Because China is a big player in this. You know, once again, we've talked about the BRICS, possibly ad nauseum. We might be boring people. And if we are, then I apologize. But I do want to let folks know that uh, there is an ancient Chinese curse. And it goes like this. May you live in interesting times. And we are definitely living in interesting times. We, we sure are. I'm going to pull up a picture, Pat. Um, recently, there were Chinese reports that over 800,000 Chinese people showed up at a shopping mall, that's a picture, um, on a on the day after the lunar holiday at a shopping mall, 800,000 people at one mall to buy gold. I mean, they, yep. the Chinese appear to be going absolutely crazy over gold. Um, and it's it's really interesting when you when you when you think about what we're doing here in the United States and the reasons why not just the Chinese government, not just the Chinese central bank, but the Chinese people are going crazy over gold. When you listen, they're saying the Chinese people are afraid to put their money in the stock market. They're afraid to put their money um, in the real estate market. They're afraid to put their money in the bank. So what are they doing? They're running to gold and silver, um, which when I, when I hear those reasons, that list of reasons, I'm like, you know, that doesn't seem too far fetched. Uh, uh, in, in terms of what we could experience here in the United States. I think you're right. I think uh, people will be running to gold and silver. And this is a historic fact, by the way, what you brought up. It's not about bonds anymore, gang. Uh, you know, basically bonds are losing to inflation. Silver and gold are not. So uh, it's actually pretty easy math. I talked about this recently with uh, someone up in Jefferson City that the bonds that they have in Jefferson City, or more specifically in Missouri, in the Treasury, are paying 2.4%. Everyone knows inflation is well beyond that. I don't care what Biden says about inflation. I, mean, I, I just don't care. Uh, the fact is, you can actually go to John Williams shadowstats.com and actually get the inflation statistics based on the 1980 or 1990 standards. Uh, the difference today is they've removed a lot of stuff from uh, the actual uh, CPI adjusted numbers. For instance, gasoline is not in it. Food is not in it, but you'll find it in the 1980 version. So 
the, what they do to manipulate inflation numbers, and we'll get back to gold and silver in a second here, but this is relevant, is they just extract huge uh, uh, parts of industry over that. I mean, just huge aspects of industry. Um, so one thing that they, they put in is electronics, because electronics made in China you know, basically haven't inflated as fast as anything that's produced in the United States or in the Western world. So this is a, a game of trickery, gang. When it comes to CPI, uh, the government lies by a factor of five, at least. Uh, in some cases, it's as low as three that they lie by a factor of three, but usually it's around five. So we had, a, uh, you know, in Truth, Money, and Freedom, we had a saying, the government lies by a factor of five. It was a rhyme that we told. And that was based on everything from, you know, CPI adjusted numbers um, to unemployment. They lie about that as well. I mean, that's a huge lie. Everyone, I think, knows that. Um, but at any rate, I digress. The Chinese know what's going on. They are not stupid. They're going for gold. So I'm gonna, I want to ask you a question, Pat, and I'm sure our viewers are wondering this as well. Uh, if we work off this premise that inflation is like a hidden tax, our yes. government, our United States government, our, our, our trusted leaders in Washington, they have this habit of spending more money every year than they bring in. So at that point, they're faced with a challenge. They could either spend less money and actually balance the budget. They could raise taxes, you know, on the wealthy. We know that's not going to happen. Or they could borrow and borrow with printed money, essentially, which leads to dilution of the currency, yep. which leads to inflation. And when you have inflation in areas like the stock market, they call it a bull market. It's great for the wealthy, right? We've had that mm -hmm. over the last number of years. When you have inflation in real estate and you're a wealthy guy who owns a, an apartment complex with a thousand units, well, that's okay. That's a bull market in real estate. But when you have inflation for everyday average Americans, it's called pain, right? It's called not being able to go uh, on a vacation or it's or not being able in some cases to put food on your table or provide some basic necessities that you need for a family. Is that is that kind of the predicament that we find ourselves in now here in the United I, States? I think so. Uh, it's uh, stagflation is what the uh, British called it for years and years when they were going through it. Some people are calling that here in the United States. I think it's more of uh, a, just a standard high inflation. Now, uh, groceries continue to go up. Uh, that is a huge problem in America, but I think in the West in general. But at the same time, I don't want to I don't want to bring up conspiracy theories or anything. But gosh darn it, with all those food uh, facilities that have been blowing up and burning down around the world, uh, how in Europe they're trying they've actually raised the diesel tax to the point where farmers really can't make a profit anymore. You know, growing food because they're regulated by the EU. So they can, you know, the, the prices are regulated there. So what the government did is just raise the prices of diesel fuel on farmers. And the protests are incredible out in Europe right now. You won't see it in the mainstream media here. But if you go to any alternative media site, you can see these huge farming protests uh, that are massive, that are widespread across Europe. It's not just in one country. It's in multiple countries. And this is a serious problem for the food supply that we are looking, uh, unfortunately, we're looking at a very, very grotesque situation where there just isn't going to be enough food. That's what we call artificial inflation. They actually reduce the supply of food and then the prices go higher. But remember now, we're supposed to own nothing and be happy. Right, right. Well, Pat, I need to interject something because we are seeing here in the United States the beginning of major major protest against what's going on. I want to share something with you here sure. with me one second. And um, this was sent to us from our good friend, Coin Shop Chris. It's gotten ah. so bad in the United States. Who's that guy? Huh? Uh, that's yeah, that's, uh, gosh, the Cookie Monster. That's who it is. The cookie Monster. And from CBS News, the Cookie Monster decries shrinkflation in the White House respond. So, you know, the farmers can take to the streets, uh, but here in the United States, we have Cookie Monster, who's apparently fighting for us. 
Let me read just a couple lines of this real quick. Uh, the nation's snack producers aren't getting anything past the cookie monster. The insatiable Muppet and beloved resident of Sesame Street is getting a high level response after he took to social media to complain that his favorite treat is shrinking. Uh, he went on X and said, me hate shrinkflation. Me <laughs> cookies are getting smaller. Uh, the googly-eyed, furry, blue Muppet declared on X Monday, tapping into an economic trend of the day. And then he said, I guess me going to have to eat double the cookies. And uh, we got a response, uh, we think, from Joe Biden in the White House. Uh, he said, uh, quote, uh, C is for consumers getting ripped off. Pre President Biden is calling on companies to stop shrinkflation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, you know, you got to be happy that the Cookie Monster's on our side in this deal. You got to be happy. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, could we even fight this battle without, you know, the Cookie Monster chiming in? Right. Um, the fact of the matter is, uh, the Cookie Monster is absolutely right. Now, like I said, in Britain, it's commonly referred to as shrinkflation. Uh, here, we just call it inflation. Guys, shrinkflation was brought up, that was coined because in uh, Europe, uh, I think it was during uh, World War II in Britain, they were reducing the size of food packaging, but, you know, charging the same amount of money. So I think that's where the term shrinkflation actually came from. Um, and of course, you know, they were having monetary problems out in England and in Europe during World War II. But the fact of the matter is, this is absolutely true. Biden literally is blaming corporations. Uh, he is not blaming the extra $7 trillion that was thrown into the monetary supply here in the last four years. Apparently, that's totally off of Biden's radar. But at the same time, I seriously doubt Biden's releasing anything. Um, I don't know that Biden even knows what's really going on in the country right now. He's just being told what to do, and he's you know signing papers. But it's his advisors, the unelected bureaucrats that are actually making policy in D.C., and that policy extends, you know, further than the monetary policy that goes into foreign policy, uh, that goes into energy policy. And so we, we are in trouble. But at the same time, can they continue to keep gold and silver down during a shrinkflation period in the United States? And if you're looking at the charts recently, the answer is apparently not. Now, silver will always be manipulated more than gold, gang. Every single time. How do we know this? Because of the COMEX, the commodity index, uh, the, the leveraging on, on paper futures contracts versus the physical holdings of the COMEX is something that is literally five to 10 times worse than we saw with the housing market in 2008 with derivative contracts based on mortgage backed securities, the original product. So the silver futures contract is nothing more than a derivative. That's it. I mean, there's just nothing behind it. And so, but that's how they tamp down silver and that's how they tamp down gold. And they're very, very good at doing this. Very, very good. They're very practiced. But gold, they tend not to tamp down anywhere near as hard as silver. And I think the reason being is because there's a lot of wealthy folks that hold gold. And those wealthy folks are donors to, uh, you know, politicians and campaigns. Yeah. And, and, you know, what we're really talking about, my, my friend Ted likes to talk about this, Ted from Ted Speaks, is a battle between Keynesian economics, right, debt-based, mm -hmm. uh, uh, money printing, synthetic uh, economics, and Austrian economics, real money, right, based mm -hmm. on silver and gold. And, when we, right. and, and, then, and then what we're really talking about also, I think, is that we're talking about real money, gold and silver, versus you know what you can get with that paper money and whether the the price measured in fiat paper money goes up or the amount that you get goes down via shrinkflation what we're seeing is uh is a is an erosion in the value of the paper money because it's been yep. diluted like you said it's been printed and there doesn't seem to be uh, any end in sight, right? We can look at the U.S. debt clock and see, you know, all of us have done that and watch the 34 trillion turn into 35 trillion. Uh, we, we can, we can everywhere we look, we can go to the grocery store and realize, right? Hey, not only did uh, the price of Chips Ahoy cookies go up in paper, you know, used to be two dollars for a for a, a container of Chips Ahoy. Now it's four dollars. 
and I'm only getting half, like they're, they're only getting half as much. Everybody's getting hit on both sides of the equation. Yeah. And, you know, let's talk about that for a second, because this, this may lead to a very interesting situation uh, called deflation. We may have a deflationary period here in the United States of America. And if we have one, trust me, it won't last long. And I'll tell you why. Banks and governments don't do well in deflationary times. They don't do well. They, the Federal Reserve will turn on the printing presses if it happens, guaranteed. Uh, because deflation will actually reduce the amount of taxation, um, you know, collection of taxes. Uh, it will reduce bank fees. Uh, so th they're not going to get left out in the cold. They are so much more important than the whole of the American citizenry, apparently. Because if we go into deflation, they are really going to hurt us with uh, printing of, of currency. And, and that's another thing, too. Right now, it'd be, it, it, we'll get back to gold and silver in a second here. We're going to talk a little bit about interest rates. The interest rates right now technically should be going down. And I'll tell you why. This is a very interesting catch-22 situation the United States government, or more specifically, the Treasury is in right now. They, their bonds roll. About every, uh, every two to four years, we have a giant amount of debt that has to be literally re-rolled. And it looks like if they're not lowering interest rates in 2024, uh, you're going to see the debt clock go freaking crazy uh, because they are paying higher interest rates on rolling over debt but they're afraid of inflation if they bring down the interest rates. Uh, so at any rate, that, that's the catch-22. Right now, um, if you remember about two months ago, they said they were going to, and maybe it was a little more than two months ago, they were going to reduce interest rates in 2024. Now they're saying they're not going to. I don't know if you guys caught on to this. And we're talking about Federal Reserve stuff here. So the, the problem is right now, the U.S. government is going to have to borrow money to pay interest on its debt. And so, and we, the taxpayers, of course, will be the ones that pay the penalty for that. We'll have to pay for it. The government doesn't produce. We have to give it money. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I, I don't have a very good feeling about the future here. If they don't lower interest rates, uh, that debt clock is probably going to go up something really crazy this year, like uh, probably something like $3 trillion of debt, maybe four in 2024. Uh, literally, guys, that is above and beyond what they take in on that debt clock. So keep in mind when you're watching that number, this isn't the whole of what the United States government takes in. This is what they're spending above what they're taking in on that debt clock. And it's, uh, it's getting pretty interesting. And by the way, if I were a foreign country, I'd be dumping American bonds. Well, uh, that's what I, let me, I, that's why I want to interject when you were talking about okay. interest rates. Think about yep. If you're China, Russia, any foreign country, yep. right? Uh, the, the, they're going to have a hard time lowering rates because nobody's going to want to buy the bonds unless the rate of rate. They're not going to take the risk unless right. the rate is higher. I mean, they really are That's in a catch-22. So then mm -hmm. they have to keep the rates high. Uh, and then that creates even more of a deficit, which adds even more to the debt pile, which means the right. rates are going to have to be higher. Uh, I don't want to be doom and gloom here, Pat. But it's not looking real optimistic. It is not. And from a guy who's looked at and studied bonds for a decade, more than a decade, actually, uh, I, I, I think we might be hitting some, some rough patches here in 2024 because this debt is rolling over, whether the interest rates are, the, are high or low. And they right now are saying they're not going to lower them because inflation is pretty bad right now. It truly is. And uh, they, of course, they lie about it. Of course, guys, one more thing here. I, I mean, I'd like to point out when the government lies. I, I really do like to point that out. They're saying inflation is so low right now, it's back down to normal. So what they're saying, it's like 2.8%, I believe, is the last time they decried a percentage, you know, of what inflation is. Guys, it's actually much, much, much closer to 10% right now. Remember I said the government lies by a factor of five? Um, so if you go to the grocery store or if you buy any goods or services, if you're looking for a home, if you're buying a car, everybody knows the government lies by a factor of five and they're going to have to roll that debt over this year. I don't have dates, but I suspect it's end of quarter kind of stuff when they have to roll this debt. 
Yeah, I've heard, uh, I, I believe the, the most recent statistic I read is that it's going to be like $8.9 trillion in debt that needs to be rolled over this year, plus another like $1.6, $1.4 trillion um, that, of new debt because of the current deficit that we have. It's going to be right. $10, $10 trillion. And what's interesting is uh, we've got this reverse repo program that the Fed uh, put together after the C-19 crisis, a place for the banks to park. And at one point it was almost $3 trillion. That's been drained, right? All that cash has been slowly fed. It's almost, it's, it really is like stealth QE has been mm-hmm. fed back in. And a lot of that money was used to buy bonds and it's almost gone. I think I read uh, it's below 500 billion at this point. So everybody's like, well, who's going to buy the bonds? And if, oh, they're going to lower rates on the bonds? No, nobody's going to. I mean, I, I'll tell you who's going to wind up buying the bonds is our old friend uh, Jerome Powell at the Federal Reserve, which will yep. just perpetuate the dilution of the currency, uh, the dollar. I mean, you know, and I think gold and silver are sniffing that out right now, right? They're the oldest, smartest, wisest markets in the world. And I think they're sniffing it out right now. So this whole idea that, oh, interest rates have to go down for gold and silver to do well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If they cut rates, big, you know, it, but in the long run, what's really going to help silver and gold are the basic laws of mathematics. That's correct. Supply and demand. And when you're talking about China, you know, basically hungrily, you know, devouring as much gold as the citizenry can get their hands on, that affects supply. Now it's, is you know it's not like the uh, the Shanghai Gold Exchange is is sharing gold, you know, with the world. They're not. They do with their partners only. And you know, actually, there's a trade program with Russia for uh, gold and oil. So that's something I think that a lot of people should uh, understand. That is a big deal. Um, yeah. And also, I've heard Saudi Arabia has actually taken gold also from. Uh, well, it was from China, but it was actually from Russia. Um, and so it, it, guys think about this for a second. Remember now our deal with Saudi Arabia, and, and we're going back to the 1970s here, Henry Kissinger set this up. It's called OPEC, right? Um, and yes, the United States set up OPEC. That is a fact. There is no getting around that. We set it up, but we set it up for them to trade oil on the dollar only. And since Saudi Arabia had the most oil at the time, I do believe they still have a lot of oil. Uh, they were allowed to lead OPEC because they had the most oil resources out of any country that was applying to be an OPEC. The deal with Saudi Arabia was you have to uh, trade oil on the dollar only, the U.S. dollar. And in return, we will actually provide defense for your nation. We will actually use our military to defend you if anyone attacks you or if you're being threatened. Uh, and that was the deal. But guess what? Saudi Arabia reneged on this. This is a this is over. The dollar being used by OPEC is over. Most OPEC nations have joined the BRICS, by the way. And the sole purpose of the BRIC nations is to get off the dollar, the weaponized dollar. And, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. And China is a very big player in BRICS. And they want off the dollar. And look at what their citizens are doing now. They're, are they going out to hoard dollars? Nope. Uh, we have an all-time <laughs> high in gold right now, gang. And one thing we ought to be looking at it from a different perspective, actually, an all-time high in U.S. dollars means an all-time low of the U.S. dollar against gold. Yeah. That's wanna, what wanna, that actually means. Go ahead. I want to I add a, a little visual to your, uh, to your statement you just made. Okay, guys, those 800 thoughts. See Pat and I over to the left? We're in that crowd, right? <laughs> Fine, Hi, Waldo. Everybody. Those are our Chinese friends, 800,000 of them at one mall to buy gold. Those 800,000 people were not in line at an ATM to get paper U.S. dollars. They were in line to get gold. Uh, Holy Pat- mackerel. <laughs> I think I see Smitty in there. What is Smitty doing buying gold Smitty- in China? Yeah, Smitty, Smitty the Silver Berry's cheating on the silver community. <laughs> um, um, uh, the other thing I want to add to what you said, Pat, about this shift away from the dollar, uh, Mike Mahari and I had a great conversation, thanks to you, 
yesterday. Mike Mahari's with the Tenth Amendment Center. Uh, great guy, super smart guy. I've got an interview with him coming out in a few days. But we were talking about the same thing that you were just mentioning. The world is moving, de-dollarization. Mm-hmm. And think about this. We, we we hear, oh yeah, de-dollarization is going on, but it's going on at the exact same time, at the exact same time that the U.S. needs people to buy their treasuries with U.S. dollars. It's like a double, right. a double whammy. Does that make sense? Like, like the U.S. is like, we, we, we have more debt than ever. We need to borrow more than ever. And the world is basically saying, and we are uh, less interested than ever in buying U.S. dollars. I mean, it's happening slowly, but it's actually, you know, it's happening in both directions, which I think is, uh, is, is, a, is an interesting scenario. Historically, Ron, uh, when a country loses world reserve currency, it takes years, many years, in some cases decades, yeah. for the uh, world reserve currency to shift from one country to another, from one government to another, whatever, what have you. And in fact, we have uh, apparently outstayed our welcome with the dollar for two reasons. We're printing too many of them, and other nations around the world are sick and tired of America and its weaponized dollar the way we go around and force our will on other nations. And this isn't meant to be a political statement. I'm telling you, this is exactly what the BRICs are saying. That's exactly what they say. They are tired of it. And you know what really spurred the BRIC nations? It's all the sanctions against Russia. And I saw a news story uh, literally just two days ago that no nations, no nations are no longer, or I'm sorry, uh, no nations are participating in sanctions against Russia anymore. This is serious, gang. This is, you know, you want to talk about a nail in the coffin of the dollar? If our military and our country is not even feared by the rest of the world anymore, and Russian sanctions are no longer working, then it's something I think we all have to pay attention to for, you know, basically the, let's just say the effectiveness of the dollar in the world right now. It's going downhill very rapidly. Yeah, because what could, wouldn't you say, Pat, that uh, the two big tools we've used over the last 50 years to become the world superpower that yeah. I guess we can say we still are, are our money and our military. Yep. Um, and 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 look, hey, you and I are patriotic Americans. We love our country, right? We were both born right yep. around the same time. I remember the bicentennial. I love this country. But I can see why what's gone on over the last 50 years, why some people in the world may not may be a little tired of the financial um, uh, games and and maybe uh, some of the actions that we've taken throughout the world as well. Um, uh, it, you know, it's somewhat understandable that uh, that now we have this BRICS and BRICS plus. Right. We have five new countries that joined this year in 30 more countries that are that are begging to join as well. Yeah. And it's going to continue. It's going to continue. And here's something too. I can't really speak to this, but I just thought I'd throw this out here. Someone I know um, that is uh, tied into information. Let's just say it that way. And uh, has told me that there's an interesting date coming up April 19th. Hmm. Didn't say why though. I hate oh. to leave you guys hanging like that, but uh, but he is heavily tied into the banking industry, uh, uh, the Bank of International Settlements and the International Monetary Fund, and that's where I think he's getting this information from. I think, um, but I I lack the time to have a discussion with him about that date. So at any rate, I think it's financial. Now, this isn't, uh, you know, everyone, you know, the sky is falling kind of stuff. I suspect it's something that's very technical that will happen on the 19th that mm-hmm. will lead to further action in the months after it. I think that's probably what he's saying, but I don't know yet. I really, truly don't right. know. So we don't we don't really know what this is, but at minimum, it's an interesting date. We know March 11th, which is what, five days from today, the bank term mm-hmm. funding program goes away. Right. That was the the bailout for the banks from the banking crisis we had a year ago. Uh, yep. And they're going to have to kind of face the music with uh, the fact that a lot of their um, uh, uh, bonds that they hold as assets have, have gone down quite significantly in value. Uh, we already talked about the reverse repo program. 
Uh, there's a lot going on. Pat, can I can I give you a break for one second while I uh, sure. say thank you to my channel sponsors? And then we're going to come back, guys, and talk about, we're talking about all this craziness in the world, right? But what's going on internally here at the United States? We're going to look at it on a national basis, how state by state we have legal tender progress being made. And then Pat's going to talk specifically about where he's an expert, and that is Missouri. And I think Pat even has a call to action for you. But first, I want to please say thank you to channel sponsor Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, the online bullion dealer. If you think it's smart to put some of your hard-earned paper money into silver, gold, platinum, do yourself a favor, check out Pimbex. I think and I believe, well, I kind of know what you're going to find is they have great prices, great selection, and great service. I've been a customer of Pimbex now for over a year, but you need to find out for yourself. You can go to Pimbex.com. And I want to say thank you to Fortuna Silver, who is actually more of a gold miner at this point. And tonight, after the markets close, we're going to hear from Fortuna regarding their fiscal year 2023 results. Fourth quarter 2023 results um, should be very exciting. You can learn more about them at fortunasilver.com. And of course, of course, our friends at First Mining Gold, Canadian Gold Development Company, two five million ounce projects in Canada. You can learn more about them at firstmininggold.com. Pat Holland, back to you. What's going on in the world of of uh, gold and silver legal tender legislation. Yeah, well, as you know, actually, I think the full number that we know of right now is 24 states. 24 okay. states are going for silver and gold legislation. And I think it's really, really important for people to understand that, that that's actually one higher than last year. We had 23 states doing it last year. But the the fact of the matter is, when you have that many states trying to do the same thing at the same time, it's just like trying to prevent, uh, you know, without getting into politics, illegal aliens from voting. A lot of states are working very, very hard on that right now at the same time. But it's the same thing with uh, gold and silver legislation. So, uh, hey, Pat, and, and I'll, hey, Pat, yeah. Pat, sorry to interrupt you. Um, I don't know if you, I know, just so everybody knows, Pat and I had some technical difficulties before we came on. So he's graciously doing this from his uh, phone. I don't know if you can see the screen, but what I've pulled I up is the Citizens for Sound Money. Uh, they have a, a, a section of their website called Find Campaign. So I'm just kind of scrolling through all the states. And I think Daniel Diaz over there is doing a great job of keeping this updated in terms of the states and kind of where they are. And again, I, I apologize for interrupting you. No, you're good. In fact, I'm glad they have that uh, because, uh, you know, once again, I the Tenth Amendment Center is generally where I go. I didn't realize there was another source to find state legislation. So I'm grateful to the Citizens for Sound Money for providing such an easy, uh, easy access for me to actually get that information. Let me tell you a little about what's going on in Missouri. Uh, in Missouri, we do have a wonderful legal tender bill. And it does a few more things than just legal tender. But at any rate, uh, we are engaged, uh, apparently, in a slow walking process of this legislation out of committee. So this is uh, standard fare. This is usually for political reasons. Um, so if you ask me, Pat, why would, why would a committee chairman in the, the Missouri legislature actually be slow walking a bill? Well, there could be a ton of reasons, but it's most likely one of two things. They want to kill it or they want to use it as leverage. So it's one of the two. But one thing that I do know is that basically uh, most of the legislature is very, very responsive to grassroots action. And therefore, I have a call to action and uh, would like people to help us out and participate in this process. Now, uh, this is involving a phone call to the chairman. And it, I don't know if you could check your email, Ron. I sent you an email with a link to the chairman's page on the Missouri House site. But I can also give that information, you know, verbally. Okay. The chairman's name is Representative Michael O'Donnell. And the name of the, uh, of the committee is Financial Institutions. That's where our silver and gold bill is. It's been in there for six weeks now. Six weeks. We did have a hearing. That's done and over with. That was over a week ago. 
but we have not had an executive session. What that means, it's time for the committee members to vote on the bill to find out whether or not it continues on in the process. We're simply not getting that vote. It's just laying there. So this is one thing I want to say before I give out a telephone number. Guys, it's very, very important when you engage in grassroots activity that you uh, are civil. And uh, also, I'm going to recommend uh, you smile when you're talking on the phone. Believe it or not, people, most people can hear when you're smiling. And so that comes across as very positive as well. But the message to Representative Michael O'Donnell is it's time to have an executive session. It's time to vote on silver and gold in his committee. So I'm going to give out his telephone number and then also if, uh, his email address. And we would like to start calling him right away. So his number is 573, and this is his office number, 573-751-3762. I'm going to read it again slower. 573-751-3762. And I think it'd be a really good idea. If people in Missouri, and by the way, if you're in Missouri, of course, call. If you're not in Missouri, I can't stop you from calling. Um, but the message to the chairman is simple. It's time to vote on silver and gold. Please bring it up. It, and if you want to, you could even leave a message. And by the way, if lots of people are calling, uh, there's only got one person there answering the phone. Uh, so his L.A. So most of them will be voicemail. You'll just leave a voicemail. But please give a positive reason as to why you want silver and gold legislation passed in the state of Missouri. So an example of this is, uh, hey, that's, that's an awesome bill. We finally have a solution to inflation and the threat of a digital currency wrapped up in one bill. And so we'd like to see this go through the process. Uh, I wanna, so that's I want to interject something, Pat, because I feel passionately about this. And that is for everybody out there, uh, that's watching right now, I know one thing about you, I can say for sure, either you love silver or you love gold or you love them both. You love your family. You want to protect your family. You want to protect your wealth with silver and gold. Why? And I think a lot of people then just kind of sit silently. I would throw out this question to you. Why wouldn't you want to get involved or be a, a strong proponent at minimum, right? A phone call, an email, whatever it is, to help further legislation, no matter what state you're in, uh, because because you know if it's if it has to do with with this with this idea that silver and gold and you want to hold silver and gold, uh, I would think that people, uh, and I mean this in a nice way, but like that people would want to see legislation passed in their state that would protect their ability or even give them their rec their ability to reclaim their constitutional right to use silver and gold as real money. I agree. And the, the funny thing is, you know, for instance, when I was talking to the chairman, I've had a couple of meetings with him. When I was talking to the chairman, you know, he's all concerned about capital gains taxes, removing capital gains taxes from gold and silver, but you have to, it's money. You can't <laughs> charge capital gains tax on money. You know, so you can uh, let me let me uh, I got I want to say well, I got to interrupt you again. You cannot. I want to repeat what Pat said. You cannot charge. I'm so I'm yelling. You cannot charge capital gains tax on money. That would be like if uh, if you had one hundred thousand dollars in the bank and the DXY index went up by 10 percent one year that you would be charged uh, a tax on your 10 percent profit that's right. on your on your dollars. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, and I'm going to interrupt you again because I had another groundbreaking thought about that. But it's 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 just absolutely ridiculous that that you charge capital gains tax on uh, the conversion of one form of money to another form of money. Sorry, I interrupted you, Pat. No, you're you're right. And it, the same thing goes for sales tax. Yeah. You know, so we don't have that in Missouri. So we don't have to worry about that. Other states have to worry about it. And uh, so this is a critical thing, a critical juncture, I think, in American history right now. Uh, the dollar, we will still be using the dollar. There isn't a single bill that I have seen 
in the entire United States of America that says, let's get rid of the dollar and just use gold and silver. There's nothing like that. So the bills that are filed across the country are, let's use them both together. Let the people decide. Let them have a choice. But the fact of the matter is, the dollar is inflationary. Gold and silver are deflationary. If people understand the concept of what that actually means, guess what they're going to want to use for money? Deflationary money, because it goes up in value while they're sleeping. They can buy more stuff with it the next day. That's just not true with the dollar, and not currently anyway. And I will remind people that we will probably go through a deflationary period. Um, and I don't know when that'll be. That might be this year. I meant for all we know. But the fact of the matter is, it will be short. And speaking I mean, the, by, speak, yes. speaking of the dollar, speaking of the dollar, I remembered my thought, Pat. I have to share this with you. Okay. Sure. So I have a question for you, Pat, since. Right now, our government charges, the federal government charges a capital gains tax on gold and silver, right? If I have, uh, you know, a thousand ounces of silver that I paid $10 for and I sell it today for $25, I've made a a $15,000 profit, which is a capital gain, which means I have to pay tax on that $15,000 when I do my tax return. By the way, I did not do that. I'm just, I've never sold silver, but I'm using that as an example. Here's my question for you, Pat. If the government (laughs) is allowing us to, to, if if you can charge capital gains tax, you can also write off capital uh, losses. I think there's a limit. I happen to be an old accountant of $3,000. But my question would be this, Pat. If let's mm-hmm. just say I had $100,000 in my bank account in 2022, inflation was officially at 10%, right? Um, yep. So I lost 10% of my value of my dollars in my bank account. My question is, why can't I write that off as a capital loss? If I Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry. You're wanting a world without uh, double standards for taxation. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> It, you're. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen anytime soon. And then that, that applies. I, to I, I have well. to say this. This is not. This is not financial advice. I'm not. I'm not recommending anyone do that. I'm just. You're right. As Pat eloquently pointed out. It's kind of a double standard. Sorry, Pat. Yeah, yeah not just kind of. It is a double standard. The same thing is true with you know with uh, lottery winnings. You win the lottery, you got to pay taxes. You spend, uh, you know, ten thousand dollars on lottery tickets during the year, and you win nothing. I don't think you can write that off. No. So no. you know, it's you a double standard. Off, you you can only write off gambling losses unless the tax code has changed. Um, but you can only write off gambling losses to the extent that you have gambling wins. So that's correct. Uh, so so you know, uh, if a person wins ten million in the lotto. Um, you know, and they only spent 10 and you know, it doesn't matter what they spent all those other, as far as I know, again, I'm, I'm, my, my accounting skills are rusty, but I, uh, but I do know that's the, 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 the law for, for gambling winnings. Well, you're right. And of course the, the <laughs> other law of gambling is, uh, there's no such thing as a lottery if you don't have losers. Yeah. And so you can't write off your loss, you know, your loss of buying tickets unless you have a win. So you, mm-hmm. you describe that quite eloquently. And I want to say, hey, listen, man, I'm a big fan of the cowbell, and we got 213 oh, likes, and I oh think it's God. time. Yeah, oh, more cowbell, God. please. <laughs> more cowbell. All right, here we go. I'm going to ring it, uh, ring the cowbell. Oh, whoa, wait, wait. I got to get that back on the screen. Hi, everybody. It's time for the cowbell. So if you don't like the cowbell, turn off your volume or turn down your volume. Let's ring it. And then, Pat, we always do one extra ring for Jake from Jake's there we Custom go. Parts. Yeah, yeah. Did Did Jake uh, send that bell to you? Uh, no, Joe, a guy named Joe F., who, okay, gotcha. um, who was a regular here in the basement, and he works uh, real close to our house. He actually brought it by the house one day on his lunch break. Nice. So, yeah, cool. yeah, that's where that that's where that came from. Okay, well, I, I'm a big fan of the cowbell. And if you guys have not seen that old Saturday Night Live skit with uh, Christopher Walken with more cowbell, please look that up sometime. It's a funny skit. It only takes about four minutes to watch. But that's where that came from. And I do believe that was in the 80s that that happened. Might have been the early 90s. Um, so to get back to our conversation, though, and I don't know if it showed up in the chat, but I did put the telephone number in for Representative O'Donnell, the chairman of the committee, 
that is slow walking gold and silver. And remember when you call, be nice. Uh, uh, being angry, being bitter, or accusing people doesn't help at all when it comes to uh, getting legislation done. And that's a fact. So uh, I'd like to give out the number one more time for Representative Michael O'Donnell. His number is 573 751 3762. And his email address is Michael, spelled out, uh, period, O'Donnell at house.mo.gov. So if you prefer to email him and let him know, hey, listen, let our silver and gold bill free. You know, it's time to actually uh, actually have a vote on this thing. We're trying to get an executive session for next Tuesday. You brought up the 11th. The 11th is a very big day for us to run. We have a, a knock and shock operation going on. And I don't want to say exactly what we're doing yet because, uh, you know, I'm waiting on a few things to happen first before I can announce what the mission is because we always have a mission with knock and shock. But we also have a rally that day in the rotunda of the Capitol. All grassroots are always invited to all of our rallies. These are big rallies. Our first one was like 400 folks. So let's get another 400 folks out there um, and then we can support silver and gold uh, that day as well. And like I said, I'll, I'll probably make an announcement. It'll be in my email list. Uh, if you're on my email list, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm waiting for something to happen first, and then I can make a, an announcement of what we're going to do with Knock and Shock. And if, so, and if you want to get on Pat's email list, go to mofree.org. Correct? That's correct. That is absolutely correct. That, yeah, if you go to our website and you go to the bottom right hand or this right hand side of the screen, scroll down just a little bit, you'll see where you can enter our email list. So if you're in Missouri, uh, particularly, uh, you know, if you're not in Missouri, you can join the list too. But Missourians, please join the list. Uh, we have to work together to get legislation like this done. Whereas this passes in other states very easily, in some some cases not so easily. Uh, we seem to have a really hard time getting this across the finish line, despite the sheer popularity of the bill with the grassroots, with the people of Missouri, and with the legislature, yet we, we get slow walked again this year. We need to actually start moving this bill, um, and it's not like we're out of time. We're not out of time. We have plenty of time to get this bill done, but we do need to get it moving again. It's been sitting in a committee for six weeks, so we need to start moving it again. And once again, Chairman O'Donnell... Uh, and once again, if you live in another state and you want to call, I can't stop you. But everyone in Missouri definitely needs to call. Chairman O'Donnell's number, 573-751-3762. And that's how you get a hold of the chairman. And uh, just leave a nice message, if you will, saying that you're very supportive of HB 1955. That's the silver and gold bill in question here. That's Representative Hardwick. Hardwick's been on your show before. He actually uh, was in the basement. Yes, that's and, right. Wonderful man. Yep. He's a good guy. And uh, so at any rate, we, he's working the inside of this. We're working the outside of this. We're trying to get it through. And this is very important for Missouri. And I think it's important for these other states. Uh, it, I don't think. I know for a fact it's important. But I, I'm starting to get the feeling that we're running out of time, that we need to get this stuff done, the silver and gold legislation in all these states as quickly as possible. And then also another exciting aspect of it is trade between the states and silver and gold. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, it's going to happen because look how many states are going for depositories. I bet that's really wild. And, and, and let me remind the silver and gold enthusiast out there who's with us today, legal tender legislation on any level, even if it goes up to things like asset-backed digital current, you know, asset-backed digital currencies, a modern uh, way to make gold and silver functional. But but at any level, any type of silver and gold legal tender legislation can only help the overall demand profile for precious metals. Would you Would you agree with that, Pat? I would, and that's a that's a, a supply demand issue. That is basic economics, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you have depositories across the United States starting to uh, secure some of their reserves in the form of gold and silver, as opposed to bonds or treasuries, which most states actually hold their reserves in, I think there might be 
a little bit of a supply problem. I think th- I think that's possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let me let's just remember right now the gold price is rocking and rolling. The silver price, and if it's okay with Pat, we're going to go out and check and see if Pat brought good luck to the silver price when he was on here. But but I'm going to pull it up here in a second, Pat. Okay. Uh, you know this. This, I have not this, looked today. <laughs> yeah, not looked today. Well, we'll see if we'll see if Pat Holland uh, brought us good luck. But this, but this legislation can only serve to increase demand. And let's not forget, guys, this is critical for silver and gold investors. Gold has been rocking and rolling. Silver's hanging in there. I, maybe we're above twenty four dollars. It's been doing that with absolutely zero interest, very, 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 very poor, bad sentiment feelings in the Western countries. Major outflows from the GLD ETF, major outflows from the SLV ETF, retail silver investment down, down, down. Okay. So, so think about that. Silver and gold have hung in there. Gold's uh, bumping up against an all-time high. Uh, but it's done that with Western United States, Europe, demand and sentiment being in the toilet. Imagine what could happen if sentiment just got a little better. Rick Rule, I love to say the saying says, silver doesn't have to be loved to, to skyrocket. Silver just needs to be a little less hated, right? And, yep. you know, things like this, legal tender. I mean, this is a movement sweeping across the country, it's important to us. It's a big deal. And let's go out, Pat, if it's okay with you, and check the uh, check the silver price. See how we're let's doing. Let's do if, it. See if Pat Holland brought us some some good luck today. Uh, you know what? We'll just go to Pimbex. I think they. Oh, oh, what do you know? Pimbex channel sponsor silver. Well, Pat, you you raised the price by fifty cents per ounce. I think we'll give you an A plus. And look okay, at cool. Gold. Thank you. Look at gold at twenty one forty two. Do you have a few more minutes, Pat, just to run through? Susie provided me with some some headlines today on what's going on. We can get everybody up to speed as to why we're seeing this. Well, according to, I believe this is from Kitco, uh, gold price remains strong as Fed Chair Powell sings the same song. Again, this is from Kitco. Uh, uh, The gold market is holding its recent gains, but is not seeing any new momentum. I think this article is a few hours old. As Fed Reserve Chair... Uh, is it? I always get it mixed up. Is it Jerome Powell or Gomer Gomer Pyle? Uh, I think they're interchangeable. Up, uh, hold on. Yes, Susie. Yes. Yes. Do you need me? Oh, wow. Susie says gold's up $21. Sorry, guys. Susie and I are still working through that. But um, uh, the Fed Reserve, uh, Powell's going to be speaking today. So, you know, apparently he's singing his prepared remarks were were read by the market. Are you still with us, Pat? I am. Okay. Let's go look at this one real quick. Gold price, because the other big news story we're going to get this week is uh, on Friday, we're going to get jobs numbers. And we all know (laughs) the high level of suspicion uh, towards the jobs numbers that that that, uh, that that are going on. But today, ADP put out their report. They always do it on Wednesday, and they missed expectations. So, you know, Friday, I've heard several people say could be a, a, a dicey day for the um, – I'm going to put you on full screen there, Pat, for the mm-hmm. for the precious metals markets as we get from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics the most recent jobs numbers because we all know Bidenomics yeah. is working so well. Yeah, in fact, I want to tell you a heartbreaking story, and anyone here who uh, who is listening to us today that actually visits their local coin store, I'm going to ask you guys a favor above and beyond calling Representative O'Donnell. And that's to ask, uh, basically, if uh, they're getting a lot of silver and gold coming into their store. And I'm starting to hear from other people that they are. A lot of people are selling gold and silver right now. But it's not for the reasons you think. It's not because the price is higher right now. It's because they're really hurting. And they need the money. And And so this is exactly what uh, Mike Maloney had actually predicted would happen towards the end of the cycle is that people would sell out on gold or some people would sell out on gold and silver just because they desperately need the money. They cannot keep up with inflation. 
Um, So the only other thing I would say is um, in regards to that is uh, people do everything you can to hang in there. Um, if this stuff is still going to go up. Uh, and of course, the states get legislation done and depositories done. That will help as well. But the real problem is overprinting the dollar. I mean, that's the real problem. This is your protection. Sell something else. Sell, you know, something else you have. And, and by the way, I hate to give financial advice. And it breaks my heart when I see that. Um, so this is not a good situation for a lot of people right now. The inflation is really devastating and we need gold and silver. And by the way, that is our constitutional right. Yeah. That is 100% our constitutional right. Uh, businesses, I've talked with a lot of businesses that seem to be very interested in the idea of transacting in gold and silver too. So this isn't just a, uh, you know, a wild harebrained scheme cooked up by, you know, a couple of, you know, government dissenters in the United States of America to try and say the dollar is bad. No, we're doing this for survival. Yeah. It's for survival, gang. So it's not about getting rich for me. It's about literally surviving. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm and I'm hearing that same thing from several contacts, including our friend Coin Shop Chris, who over the last seems like six, seven weeks was telling me about people coming into the shop and selling some silver, or selling some gold because they need to buy groceries or they need to pay their rent or they need to make a car payment. And it is heartbreaking, no doubt about it. And I think a last case, but also, I guess, uh, to a certain degree, it also does show us that your silver and gold can provide for you during times of hardship. Um, you know, I guess the, the pardon the pun, but the silver, silver lining and all of that. And yeah, Pat, right, like you said, this is what our founding fathers, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Hamilton and the guys that wrote the U.S. Constitution, they are giving you a high five right now. You know, Andrew Jackson, Thomas Jefferson, the, this is what our founding, I mean, Thomas Jefferson said, the biggest threat to our country is not an invading army, but central banks and big corporate banking interests. So um, it'll be great to watch as things progress. Uh, Pat, did I forget anything? I'll put some links and uh, in phone numbers and all that in the description of this video. Uh, but on behalf of all the viewers uh, for what you've done for us today and over the last year plus, thank you, Mr. Pat Holland. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for entertaining you know me on your show and everything. I really do appreciate it. Uh, important date. March 11th, gang, Monday at the Capitol in Missouri, Jefferson City, Rotunda. We will have a giant rally. Gold and silver will be a part of that rally. That's all I'm willing to say right now. Um, so this is a big deal for Missouri, and we need uh, grassroots to come together. Uh, apparently, the fact that this bill is incredibly popular has more co-sponsors than any other bill. Um, the fact that it's gotten so many phone calls and so many emails apparently isn't enough for O'Donnell. So please do light up his phone today. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking a favor, gang. Let's get O'Donnell to understand how big this is and how much we want it. So once again, I'm going to give out uh, his telephone number, uh, 573-751-3762. And if you leave a message, just say, please exec on gold and silver, HB 1955. Or you could just simply say, we need a vote in your committee on gold and silver. So that's essentially what you're asking for. An executive session is a voting session in the committee. So that's, and then we shorten that, you know, because we shorten everything in Missouri, we call that, you know, execing or execing out. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, the gold and silver thing is a big deal here in Missouri, very big deal. Uh, I guess some of the powers that be aren't real happy with the bill. And I think it's time that we show the might and the power of the grassroots uh, to Chairman O'Donnell. I think he needs to see how many phone calls can be generated, how many people are wanting gold and silver legislation in the state, how many people um, actually care about this issue a great deal. And uh, by the way, we have not received any negative uh, feedback from any bankers. So uh, specifically on HB 1955, nothing. They're okay with it. They're neutral. They're certainly not supporting it. They're not making phone calls saying this is the best thing since sliced bread, but they are not fighting it. Because you know why, gang? 
this is a really important point to drive home too, especially when you have so many states doing this. The fact of the matter is mom and pop banks, credit unions, and regional banks will disappear under a central bank digital currency. They have no function anymore. And that's exactly, uh, gold and silver is exactly what they need to stay in business. And we like our mom and pop banks and our credit unions. We don't want them to go away. They are pillars of the community. They have always been there for us. It's the Federal Reserve overprinting dollars that is literally writing their epitaphs now. It is not you and I. So uh, please do participate. Please help us out. Please give uh, Representative O'Donnell a call. And I really do appreciate it. Yeah, well, Pat, we uh, we appreciate you being on the here in Ron's basement on this live stream for over an hour. On behalf of all the viewers, thank you. I also want to say thank you to our moderator team helping out moderate the chat. Uh, I always type eight because eight is great for those that moderate. And Pat, uh, we're going to look forward to seeing you again soon here in the basement. Thank you very much, Ron. Be blessed. And again, I really appreciate you having me back, buddy. Love you. Love everyone in the basement. Thank you, guys. I meant for all you guys do. So let's keep this thing going here. And believe me, the solution is gold and silver. That is the solution. And it may not be the end all be all, but it's definitely part of the transition from one currency to another over time, over history for over a thousand years. When one fiat currency fails in a country, they move to gold and silver in the interim and then move to another one because they have to value gold and silver from the old currency to the new. And something is going to happen here in the United States here with CDBCs. It's coming, gang. It's coming. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Pat. Okay. Su- Could you please repeat that, Susie? It's, it's Oh, three more likes for the gong. Oh. Well, hey guys, let's let's ring the gong. What are we at? Two ninety seven. I can't see how many likes we're at. Two ninety nine. It looks like to me. Two, Holy oh, mackerel, let me, man! Let's get the gong ring, done. Let's there get it is. Three hundred. Right, there. Hold on. That's all right. <laughs> Our old friend Stu gave us a gong. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So we're gonna ring the gong for you out there, basement dwellers. Right? You're you are the most important part of the basement. Thank you, Stu, for the gong. And we're going to ring the gong for Pat Holland three times. I'm always fascinated with how that resonates. Pat, thank you. We'll look forward to seeing you you soon. And thanks to all our viewers. Have a great day. God bless all of you. Thank you.